with you welcome back to my channel today i have a huge stack of books to talk about like i always do this isn't even half of the stack however these are the books that i read in october in october i read 17 books one of them was electronic format i read a galley version of the water cure by sophie mcintosh i got that from net galley everything else was a print book I got quite a few of them from the library, but I also read some books from my own shelves. Books that I've gotten from publishers and also books that have been on my TBR shelves for a while. So October was a really great reading month. And so today we're going to just recap all the books that I read in October. And since there are so many, and I don't want this video to be too long, I'm just going to tell you maybe a sentence or so about all the books that I read. And then we're going to do book links, but that comes later. So the first book that I read in October... The first book that I finished in October was Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. This is about a middle-aged man named Humbert Humbert who is obsessed with nymphets. Those are young girls who relationships with them would be illegal, except he thinks that he's liberating them. He doesn't see what he's doing as illegal because these nymphets, he says, are ready for relationships and in allowing himself to be with them or allowing them to be with him he's really liberating their spirit a spirit that society does not recognize and so would have left unquenched if not for him and in this book vladimir nabokov really explores the human psyche the human mind the depravity that it will go to to justify wrongs but also the tolerance of the reader in spending 300 and something pages of a depraved man talking about his conquests. So that was Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Next, I read The Lost Art of Reading by David Ulin, and this is subtitled Books and Resistance in a Troubled Time. This is a nonfiction exploration of this professional reader's attempts and failure to convince his son to become absorbed in books the way the father is. David Ulin was a critic, a professional reviewer for the Los Angeles Times. And in this one, he explores what technology and the advancement of our age has really robbed us off or the sacrifices that we've made in order to become more technologically savvy. It also means that we no longer have the ability to be immersed in books because we're constantly being distracted. And so in this one, he explores his own relationship to books and what he wishes his son would do, but also the compromises, I suppose, that his son makes to become his own kind of reader in the process. Then I read The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh. This was a net galley version of the Booker Prize nominated novel. It's not yet released in the United States, but it was released in the United Kingdom several months ago. This one is about a family, a man named King, his wife, who's unnamed throughout the novel, and their three daughters, Leah, Sky, and Grace. Over the course of the novel, we learn that this family has been sequestered on this island for some time and they've been accepting refugees from the mainstream society who have been abused or hurt in some way and they come to this family looking for treatment a temporary respite and the mother performs some treatments some version of a water cure on them to prepare them for going back this one is dystopic fiction and has been compared to the handmaid's tale specifically because of the way it explores how women are treated in patriarchal societies but also how women are treated by each other then i read meet me at the museum by Anne youngson this is epistolary fiction and it is a new release i got this one from the library so pardon the glare it is composed entirely of letters being exchanged between two people tina and anders they are living in different countries one is in england the other is in denmark working at a museum the letter exchange begins and blossoms because both of these people have lost someone significant in their lives and they're questioning some of the choices that they've made along the way and exploring whether they can make new choices about their life moving forward. And I read The Emperor of Shoes by Spencer Weiss, and this is about a Jewish American living in China and the relationship that develops between him and a seamstress who's working in his father's shoe factory. Both of them come to the relationship with very different agendas, and the question is about whether their personal relationship will impact their political desires, or the other way around. And then I read The Mandela Plot by Kenneth Bonnard, which takes place in South Africa, but is about Jews 
and Americans living there. And so you could already see where Booklinks is going, where this one is concerned. So more on that later. Then I read Snap by Belinda Bauer, and this is another book that was nominated for the Man Booker Prize this year. This is crime fiction. I think this is the first crime fiction that has been nominated for the Booker Prize, so that was a little controversial. There's a young boy at the forefront of this novel, and he and his sisters have been abandoned by their mother on a road trip. And in the process of trying to find her, they discover that she's been murdered. And so where Jack starts off looking for his mother, then he focuses on trying to find her killer. And he thinks he's found her because he's identified the murder weapon, even though it's never revealed how he knows it's the murder weapon exactly. But he's sure that the person who's in possession of the murder weapon is his mother's killer. And so he starts leaving messages for that person, but the messages are intercepted by someone who has another secret. And yeah, crime fiction. I talk about this in a reading vlog, so watch that reading vlog if you want to hear a little bit more about this one. Then I read another book that was nominated for the Man Booker Prize this year. This is Warlight by Michael Andante, and this follows two siblings whose parents also abandoned them. The father and mother say that they have to leave right after the war has ended and they have to go be in Indonesia for some time and in the process of them being left by their parents we won't use the word abandoned in the process of them being left by their parents they discover things about themselves but also discover things about their parents and their parents secret identities and so it's a coming of age novel that is set in the period after World War II and so there's a theme in this book of generational curses and not being able to escape the destiny that or the path that you've been put on because of the choices that your parents have made and yeah more on this one in my reading vlog then i read the elected member by bernice rubens and this is about a middle-aged man named norman who's kind of been elected as a scapegoat for his family and while he seems to be having a psychotic breakdown and his father and sisters are trying to help him through this breakdown although their version of help involves trying to tranquilize him and then eventually having him committed to a mental hospital but this one is an exploration of the scapegoat idea and how one person can be chosen to represent the ills of the society but on another layer this one is also about the election process and government and the role of government in our lives and how we select people to represent us and ultimately abandon them or chastise them or criticize them when they do exactly what we would have done in the same situation. So while in this one, Norman is a scapegoat, we also see other people who are representative of ministers of government in this book. Very interesting. Then I read Heat and Dust by Ruth Prower Javala. And this one looks at the role of women and how women are treated in very different societies. And it also explores the relationship between England and India over the course of 50 year history. First, we look at England in India in the 1920s during the period of colonization. And then in the 1970s, after India has become independent, and what that independence looks like reflected through the choices that women make for their own lives. And so in this novel, women embody the spirit of the country and the choices that women make are a direct reflection of the changes of culture and society. And then I read Hotel du Lac by Anita Bruckner and this one is about a writer, a female writer, who's made some choices that she's not entirely comfortable about. And her friends are also not comfortable about them. And so her friend recommends that she goes to this hotel in Switzerland to take some time to recover and write. And she sees herself and she sees her life being mirrored in what she's writing. And she's fictionalizing her life and incorporating the experiences that she's having and the people that she's meeting. In this novel, we have men really functioning in the role as antagonists and provoking women questioning themselves and questioning what they want out of life. How they offer respite from what the world or society might throw at them. The choices that these men give women seem to be like the ultimate between a rock and a hard place or choosing between the lesser of two evils. Next, yeah, I still have more books. Next, I have three books from the publishers. The first was The Amendment by Anne Leigh Parrish. This is about a woman who divorced her first husband and married an older man. And this older man dies on the first pages of the novel. While she would entertain going back to her first husband, he's since remarried. And instead, she's being wooed by her now deceased husband's best friend. 
So she goes on a road trip and even though we see her as a pretty unlikable character, she's also in possession of, it seems, a small fortune. On the road, she meets all these new characters and uses her money for good to try to help them out of difficult situations. Then I read Love in Catalina Cove by Brenda Jackson. This is about a woman who inherited an inn in her hometown. And while she no longer wants to live there, she's being pulled back. Not just because the townspeople refuse to allow her permission to sell the inn, but because she's fallen in love, not just with the place, but also with a person. Love in Catalina Cove is set in the Louisiana Bayou, and it's about a young woman who's getting her second chance at love, even if the first chance disappointed her. Then I read The Girl They Left Behind by Roxanne Veletas. This one is set in Romania during World War II. At the center of this novel is a three-year-old girl who's abandoned by her Jewish parents because they're being persecuted and they want to give her a chance to live. And eventually after she's taken and being raised by someone else, her parents return for her. While she is taken in by someone who cares for her, the family who left her behind also still cares for her. And ultimately, there is a claim on who Natalia really belongs to and whether she can escape the destiny to which she was born. As a child of Jewish parents living in the Holocaust, and even afterwards. Then I read Voices from Chernobyl by Svetlana Alexevich, and this is a compendium of interviews of people who witnessed and were affected by the nuclear disaster that happened in Chernobyl in 1986. And I read There There by Tommy Orange, and this is a collection of character sketches that are linked to tell a story. The story is of a Native American family and the different branches, lots of different people who are estranged from their family members, babies who are given up for adoption, and ultimately reunited with family members and people who didn't know that they were related but ultimately find out that they are. They all come together in this story. And so while we have a lot of very explosive elements, they all seem to come together in what should be a celebration of Native pride but becomes a powwow in the negative sense of the word. This one is about Native Americans in the United States, set in Oakland, California. And the last book that I read in October was The Finkler Question by Howard Jacobson. And this one explores the idea of Jewishness and Jew versus Christian, Jew versus Gentile, and anti-Semitism as it is in present day United Kingdom, present day experience. So the characters in this one are Julian Treslov, whose name is Julian, even though he's not a Jew, and his two Jewish friends, a man named Samuel Finkler, who embodies the spirit of Jewishness and is a person that he's known since they were boys in school, and their former teacher, a Czechoslovakian Jewish man named Libor. And yeah. And so those are all the books that I read in October. Now for book links. I'm going to try to link every book that I read with the book that I read before and the book that I read after it. So the first two books that I finished were Lolita and the Lost Art of Reading. And both of these books take a literary journey in a very different way. In this one, we have Humbert Humbert and his captive Dolores, because she's a captive at that point. She just doesn't know it. They take a literary and a literal journey. But Humbert Humbert talks about the influence that literature has had on him. He makes references to literary greats and the debt that he owes them because of the influence that they've had on him. As does David Ullin in this one. Both of these books explore the idea of children deciding whether they want to accept or reject the lessons from their parents. In The Lost Art of Reading, we have the book reviewer's son not necessarily sure whether or not he wants to be a reader and not feeling as strong an affinity for reading as does his father. And in The Water Cure, we have three sisters who, when their parents are no longer around, have to decide whether they want to continue the traditions that their parents built up or they want to go back to where their parents were before they were on the island, both literally and in terms of their practices. The Water Cure and Meet Me at the Museum seem to both be epistolary in that the Water Cure, a lot of it is written in journal entry form where the girls are writing letters seemingly like they're writing to their father after he has left. And the story in Meet Me at the Museum unfolds entirely in a letter exchange between two people. Both of these books feature characters who work in the family business and are working for their fathers. In Meet Me at the Museum, Tina's family owns a farm and their adult children, even though they're married and could have moved away, still live on the farm so that they can work there. And in The Emperor of Shoes, Alex's father owns a shoe company in China and that is where he works and meets the other main character in the novel. While The Emperor of Shoes is set in 
China and the Mandela Plot is set in South Africa, both of these novels feature people of Jewish descent living in these foreign countries and exploring what it means to be a Jew within the context of their current society. Both of these books have young boys as their main characters. In the Mandela plot, Martin is at a private school in Johannesburg when we meet him. And in Snap, Jack is a 13-year-old professional criminal and also trying to find his mother's killer. Snap and Warlight both feature characters who are children when they're abandoned by their parents. For different reasons though. Snap features Jack and his two younger siblings who are abandoned by their mother at first and then she dies and then their father ultimately can't deal with the stress and he also abandons the children to kind of take care of themselves and in Warlight we have a brother and sister who their parents decide to leave the country and leave them in the care of a man who they think is a criminal and so while they're supposed to be in boarding school they're not and so ultimately they're left to be cared for by someone who's not their parents because the parents decided that they had other things that were more important than staying home and raising their children oh does that sound like a rant warlight and elected member both featured children whose parents were involved in world war ii of course in different times warlight is set in 1945 in london and nathaniel and rachel's their parents were involved in the war as probably members of the resistance. And in the elected member, we have Norman, whose father was one of the European Jews who escaped and who came here right after the war looking for a better life. And then we have these three books that are linked in many different ways, but I'm gonna say that these are three of the first female Man Booker Prize winning novelists. And let's just leave it at that because this video is so long. And then we have these two books that are exploring what it means to be a woman in a changing society. In Hotel du Lac, we have the writer who's exploring feminism as it relates to the choices that she's made for her own life, as well as witnessing how other women choose to live. And then we have The Amendment, where Lavinia's husband has died and she's having to face life alone and the choices that she's going to make for her life now that she has her husband's money to play with and it opens doors for her that weren't open previously and then we have these two books that are linked because the female main characters have inherited something from someone close to them who has just died and they're dealing with what that inheritance will do to change their lives and whether they want their lives to be changed and how much and then we have these two books that are linked in that we have mothers who have lost children in different ways and how they atone for the losses and whether they're able to open up their hearts and love again. And then we have these two books that are set in the former Soviet Union. The Girl They Left Behind is set in Romania. Around the time that Romania fell to the Soviet regime, this is around the 1940s. And then we have Voices from Chernobyl by Svetlana Alexievich, which is set in Ukraine in the 1980s. And both of these show the suppression of voices while these seem to be very different genres in that this is non-fiction and this is fiction in voices from chernobyl svetlana alexievich was able to put herself as the storyteller and take these voices from all these different experiences around the nuclear incident and tell the story in a very profound way and within there there we also have a documentarian a fictional documentarian who's setting up his camera and allowing people to come by and tell their own stories, not as they are influenced by him, but telling anything that they can remember, any profound experience that they can remember about being native and collecting them so he can put them together in one complete story, much the way that Alexevich did in this one. There, there, and the Finkler question both look at how minorities are treated in mainstream culture and how their histories are represented to the rest of the world. There There, of course, is about the Native American experience and the Finkler question looks at the Jewish minority, which according to Jacobson, the minority is not quite such a minority. And so both of these books seem to look at the majority influenced by these minority peoples. And the challenge, of course, is to link the last book that I read with the first book that I read in the month. And there's no other link necessary. Both of these have very unlikable main characters. Julian Treslove is unlikable for a lot of reasons. So is HH in this one. And that's it. That's book links. That is my extremely long October recap book links video. Thanks for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, I won't 
give you any bonus content today because all of this let's consider all of this bonus content but, but give me a thumbs up if you like this video subscribe if you haven't already so that you won't miss the next video that i post i don't know when that's gonna be and leave me a comment down below let's talk about one of the books that i talked about here i talked about so many books that covered such a range of genres and interest that i think there's probably a book that i talked about that you're probably interested in too so let's talk about it in the comments so until next time happy reading bye